Thank you very much. Um, I'm really nervous, so apologies for that. Um, Sarah will be helping me with the, with the visual content of my talk today. I was really thinking if a visual content will be necessary for my talk, but I believe that for you it will be a little easier to try to enter to my world. I am Juan Pablo Culasso, and in this part of my talk, of my talk I invite you to go to the, my iconic expedition ever, to the Antarctica. The Antarctica for me was a dream comes true. When I was 13 years old, watching an Agia documentary together with my father, watching a documentary of Scott's and Amundsen expedition, I talked to him, Dad, one day we are going to be together there. And in 2015, we made it. We spent 54 days in the Uruguayan military base, General Artigas in King George Island. And uh, for me, as a blind nature recordist, it was a really, a really spectacular challenge. A lot of snow. Yeah, even in summer, was one of the most snowy summers ever in the island in the last 20 years, this year, 2015. More than three meters of snow. And, uh, you know, um, sometimes people get, get scary about blind people. It was uh, the case of the chief of the base that at the very beginning, uh, he wasn't a blind explorer be there because um, he had a lot of concerns. But one day, he talked to me and my father, let's go walk together. And uh, we walk over the snow, over the rocks, over the ice. And after a beautiful two hours walk, he said, let's go do whatever you want to do here. So I'm going to introduce to the first, maybe the most obvious and common sound of, of Antarctica. penguin colony, a horrible, smelly penguin colony. <laughs> yes, it's beautiful to listen. Even it's beautiful to see, but it's horrible to smell and walk over there. It's horrible, guys, believe me. Even in minus 10 Celsius with a wind there. So raise the volume a little bit to listen a little bit more of the penguin colony. Please. Sadly, this penguin colony is one of the most polluted penguins colony in Antarctica by heavy metals. Even the, the, sal the salmon manufacturers in Chile, the medicines that they use for the salmons, arrives that coast. Yeah, beautiful things and bad things. The next sound Massimino words came to my brain, remember that recording. But Mike was not 30 seconds. I need to stay 25 minutes recording that 120 kilometers per hour wind outside. So, yes, 
but today I remember that sound and uh, it sounds is the 80% of the time in Antarctica. Wind, penguins, of course, and then be prepared for the next one. Go ahead. Not a thunder, it's an iceberg cracking. I believe that I was extremely lucky recording that once in a million times because I was not using any kind, any kind of automatic record system. Just me, the microphone, my hand, I'm a recording. And I was trying to record a small bird, but at the same time, that explosion came and really. Um, is one of the most uh, beautiful and beautiful sounds that I could record there. Next, next, let's go below the water. Cracking sounds are a species of shrimps, but in the low, in the base, that bubbles are the ice melting below the water. Above the water, maybe, is a really, really silence around you. But below the water, these sounds is happening all the time. But yes, even flying more than 7,000 kilometers from my country to there, I was expecting that I never found the next sound. Not yet, please. The next sound is really, it was really a dis a disappointing for me in the Antarctica. I was not expe expecting that too much, but really happened too much. Let's go. Yes. Soundscape, human-related sound pollution. It happens a lot there, a lot of helicopters, planes, boats, snow, motor, cycles, whatever you can imagine. Even there, really far away from civilization, was really hard in certain days, try to get a place, put my microphones, and press the rec button. The second part of my talk, maybe you are asking, but who is Juan Pablo? How did he get a nature recordist? Even today, sometimes I ask the same question for myself. But yes, when I was 15 years old, I was invited by biologists in Uruguay, my country, to go to the field to record sounds. And I said, what is that to record sound? What it is? What it exactly is? And the leader of the expedition said, 
Juan Pablo is basically, I'm going to give you a record, a microphone, press rec, and that's it. Well, I, haven't, I, haven't, I had not idea that these small three actions put a recorder on my shoulder, a microphone in my right hand, headphones, change my mind. So the next sound is really special for me. Yep. It's the first audio recording that I made in 2003, January 16th, 2 p.m. A kingfisher in Uruguay in the summer using a cassette record machine. And this sound changed my life. I was preparing to begin to study uh, lawyers, or liars, maybe, are the same thing. So, because you, you need to understand that blind people, the only thing that we listen in our life is, you need to study a humanity career, or whatever like that, like history, letters, uh, lawyers, psychologists, I think like that, and I was preparing to do that, because if someone's, is all, all the people tell a thing in every moment of your life, you believe on that. But, well, when I press rec and record that, that kingfisher, this kingfisher brings me to the best travel in my life ever. I began to study in Brazil. We went to, with my father to Brazil, and uh, I was received by a a teacher in Campinas University, but not in a formal way. And here's the thing. In Latin America and in many other countries, we suffer a lot of discrimination in access to education. If I follow the system rules, I believe that I'm not, uh, I, I could never be here, for example. So I always break the rules. I love break the rules. So these kind of things make me really, really happy. But then, in 2011, I discover other thing, and it's in the next sound. This is my first soundscape recording made in Brazil in Minas Gerais State. I discovered that soundscapes, natural soundscapes, are one of our, of our heritage that are disappearing in a really highly rate speed. To go to the field and record sounds of nature is nice, is amazing, but at the same time it's really sad because you can go to a place, press the rec button, and then you don't know in even the next year that place will be untouched. And sadly, I had already three or four times that I recorded a place. I returned to that place again and changed dramatically. And that sound fingerprint dismiss forever. Do you understand? Forever. You can listen to that only through an audio recording. So for me, it's really, really horrible. And we need all of us to protect that thing. You do not conserve the places that you don't know that exist. So all of us, as a society, need to be aware of the places that we are losing. If not, 
we are, lose, we are, we are going to listen our nature places like in the next sound. So, you know, I'm a people that moving forward every time, every day. I'm thinking really new things to do. And uh, many years ago, four years ago, um, in our world of inclusion, we have a phrase. A thing like that, do nothing for us without us. Because in so many situations, even with, with amazing intentions, and uh, it will be the third part of my talk, people try to do things for us, but never works as expected, because they don't ask us to go together and achieve the goal that you are trying to do. So you lose resources, you lose a lot of time. And uh, I want to open this third part of my talk with the next sound. This is a beautiful, this is a beautiful, beautiful night recorded in one of the most beautiful wetlands areas in the world called Pantanal in Paraguay. And this sound represents too much because so many people get scary about night. And, they, and then at the same time, in some situations, in most situations, get scary about to, even to talk to a blind person. This is so normal because uh, in some kind of societies, we are raised separately from you. Today, the things are changing, but many years ago, not. So after that, I questioned myself, what can I do for other blind people to go out to nature like me? Because I'm a privileged person. My family supports me a lot. My father give, gave me, my mother gave me a lot of opportunities. And that for this reason, I, I'm here. But what about the other blind people? So for the last four years, together with my wife, Sarah, we are, going to, we are work, working together to make natural areas, initially private natural areas, accessible, inclusive for blind people. Adapting trails, using braille. Maybe most of you are asking, what is this thing? I'm checking my time. 18 minutes, 52 seconds. Sorry, Richard, maybe I'm going to pass a thing. So, so um, we are using a lot of technology in the trails, but cheap technology, like QR codes or things like that. To blind people, go with their smartphones, their families, go out to nature and enjoy like me. And believe me, some of them, many of them, never go outside. Never go outside. But What's the main reason? Because there are not opportunities to them to go outside. Because we want to go there. We want to, to take memorable experiences, as you can see in the screen that I had, a lot of memorable experience. But what about the other blind people? So I'm proud to say that I'm doing this right now and sharing my knowledge with my community. It's a really, a really, really big responsibility that I took to myself 
to share knowledge with my community and empower my community to do things, to lead things. Yes, we need you. I need you as an explorer, of course. But in some situations, you need to be one step back from us and let us know bright. So I want to close my talk with an absolutely gratitude to all of you with a sound, a really special sound. Even with 20 years of career, I could never return to my country, Uruguay, to record sounds. But three years ago, I get granted by two absolutely marvelous friends, and I could record the natural sound map of soundscape, soundscapes of Uruguay. And I would like to show one of my favorite sounds for you today. From the bottom of my heart, thank you very much.